Okay, it looks like it's 12 degrees out. This is snowstorm number two or three here. I'm losing count. I know it's nighttime. We'll do a little night vision. I'll try and do some night filming here. Um, we did plow and snow blow and shovel. Uh, it was even higher than the, the poor little truck there. And there's still more people out. and uh, show you what the mail brought today. Okay, now that we're back inside and our snow attire is off. Um, well, someone told me once, a woman told me once, uh, every day is a good day as long as you dress for it. And I tell you, without the wind blowing, it's 12 degrees out, but it was not, wasn't that bad out. I was out there for probably a couple hours still, and it uh, wasn't that bad. Uh, I, I wanted to go out, so... Uh, I went to the local hardware store and I wanted to get a funnel because we're filling up all these machines around here between uh, plow trucks and and snow throwers and whatnot. Uh, as I was saying, we had to fill all these snow throwers and uh, the plow truck is uh, not uh, for the road, so we have to fill that manually. I have a plastic funnel that I've used to get into the long neck of the tank of the truck, but uh, it's plastic and over time they crack. Um, so I was on the on the prowl for a uh, a good funnel which I have a number of them from other stores but I came across these two and this one was on sale uh, the super quick fill that, that's fine um, that's one reason that decided uh, I would uh, purchase that one um, this would be good for the, like the snow thrower or whatnot big mouth but it's not long enough to get into the nozzle of the of the vehicle. So next to it was this one here. And also uh, something that should give us good service. Uh, and here's the box we received in the mail. There's one other thing we've been working on I want to show you. And it's right here. This is that for that um, slumber center, still on the slumber center. I went to, uh, this was at the Harbor Freight. These were a dollar on clearance. The three LED touch light runs on three AA batteries, which would be four and a half volts. And I'm looking for something suitable to run that, um, uh, to run at about nine volts. So I have the power supply at uh, four and a half volts. I've removed the switch, and now I just to, to light these, I would just have to uh, jump across the, these two right here. I'll just show you what it does. At first, I thought they didn't solder there, but uh, they only used two of these terminals here. Anyway, you get the idea here. That's four and a half volts. I'll switch it over to current here and uh, when these are on one two three ninety milliamps ninety milliamps at four and a half volts um, it has a 10 ohm resistor in it why 10 I don't know um, I don't know four and a half volts 10 ohms I don't know if it's across all three or whatnot. I just dug up a, a 500. I thought uh, this is a 500 ohm. I'm going to stick that in where the switch is just to see what it does. Okay, you'll have to take my word for it, but I believe all these LEDs are in uh, in parallel. They're all parallel to each other. I've just gone and stuck that resistor across in line with the 10 ohm, and it is much, much dimmer. And I'm not even getting a current reading. It's just, it's four and a half volts, not current. I'm going to bump that voltage up to uh, 
We'll go up to like 9 volts and see how we do. Ooh, we're already up about 6. And they're pretty bright. I still have no current though. That I don't quite understand yet. Okay. Up to 8.9 volts. I don't think that's bothering them too bad. That's four and a half. That's like 9.4. How about I just go with this? Again, uh, maybe this doesn't read under under the amperage of, but I'm not getting any uh, any current there. Maybe I'm not hitting the threshold. Of, I don't want to over voltage it. Okay. I'm happy with that. It won't draw too much from the radio. And I'll mount this in a we'll mount this in a socket. We'll come up with something for that. Okay, on to the box. I usually like to open boxes from the bottom. I don't know why, but I'll do it from the top in this case. Most people generally don't put any packing on the bottom. And seeing we were working on uh, those Longines, I think was the brand radio from the 70s. I stumbled across this. This was not working. Not a lot of money. But it uh, it came up when we were looking for a donor for the other radio. enough radios. I bought this because it's short wave and it's kind of unique. Let me get it out of the box. Of course, some cardboard, no double boxing. Let's see how it did. Okay, here we have from that same outfit. Get glare there. The convertible console four band radio. Close it, it's a console. You open it up and it's a portable. We'll take a look at this straight standing up. I'll inspect it for damage and whatnot. I was a sold is not working. Uh, it makes noise but it does not it doesn't run. So let's take a look. Okay. We have an external power here. Japan. Uh, the cover was off, but you basically just turn these levers here. 4 D's, 8 ohms, 2 watt, battery speaker. A is antenna, E is ground. A lot of these, this is just AM, must not be FM. Uh, we'll take a look. Did not even look at it. He said something about the, uh, here's our antenna, long wire. He said something about the, a pretty decent sized speaker in there. He said something about the, the battery compartment, some something broken on the battery compartment, but uh, it was shown in the picture. Oh, it must be the compartment of the radio. This is portable in the console. There's an external power here. We'll see what the polarity is there and see if we can't hook that up to some power. No AC transformer whatsoever. So when you open this cover, it has a plastic uh, shutter here that when you take your radio out. Uh, it has a, a power jack or something, something there. There we go. Kind of gets a bottom feed there. Okay. External power, external antenna. Let's open up the battery compartment. Let's get the put the console aside. I don't see any damage. I just saw uh, it has one little thing there. I don't know if that happened in today's shipment. It could be fresh. It looks kind of fresh. Who knows? The way it was packaged, it's lucky it came uh, the way it did. So let's set this aside. Oh, 
take a look at this. Handle is loose, but there. Get this around to get a closer look at it. That is one heavy handle. What that mark is on the dial there. Tone. Off on volume. Band and tuning. Mega cycle, mega cycle, mega cycle, kill a cycle. It does have FM and a rod antenna. Give me some more light. Let's get some more light going here. All right, let's flip this over and see how it works. Okay, basically here's what the seller was talking about. This side uh, tried to get gently off, but it's just so corroded. The uh, it's a standard. It's like a nine volt battery terminal. It is is original. Um, yeah, it would be kind of tough to make a repair of that. We could just get a replacement. And uh, I know I have one of these somewhere. I've seen one of these, or we could just put another terminal on this uh, right here I mean so here's your double A's six volts it's too bad if the springs were needed I could use it use the uh, something from this uh, harbor freight light there might be able to still use some of that uh, but any event let's uh let's power it up and see what happens and uh, as a joke I was saying well, if it's a console, it should have a phonograph input. And I'm looking on the side here. And it has earphone and phono. Phono. This is everything you need right here. Okay, basically on this, two screws. And there's usually the missing, uh, the last, I mean, the last hidden screw in the bottom there, but uh, in the battery compartment, but this doesn't have it. The 9 volt battery clip will just slip through the slot there. We must be careful of the FM antenna over here. And we'll have a look inside here. Oh, and they put a receptacle to pull that off. I don't want to pull that off right at the moment. All right, I'll give you a look around inside here. Let me get this back situated. Okay, that antenna lead really doesn't want to come off. I gave it a little pull, but it didn't want to budge, and I don't want to damage anything, so we'll leave that off to the side. Oh, I'll just take a look around here. Test points. Oh, some strange... IF transformers, but any event, um, does say Sanyo again on the speaker, so that leads me to believe Sanyo. Uh, okay, let's see where this this goes. Goes to the DC jack, of course. All right, let's see if we can get some power into this thing. Okay, I've traced my leads back, and no little schematic inside. No little schematic. Well, we did find a piece of uh, dog food in the box. The box is clear. Uh, that can be thrown away now. We've checked it. There are no parts missing. Um, yeah, these usually would give a little schematic somewhere, come to think of it. Well, any event, positive here, negative goes to the jack and then up to the power switch. So. Is this another one of those negative ground sets? I'm not sure. It'd be hard pressed to find a uh, diagram for this, but let's uh, power it up now and see what happens. Um, come over here. Our voltage is down. Bring it up to, up to six volts. Watch our current, then we'll turn it on. There is the fear, of course, that this is going to become a big 
three ring circus and it's going to be filled with all kinds of stereotypes and the comedians are already uh, latching on to it um, there's always the chance that this kind of thing can also be AM FM switches on these can be uh, notorious that that's right here we actually know this was often the case when AIDS was just emerging in the uh, uh, 80s tuning is Spice, 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 That is That is Megacycle FM Shortwave 2 Shortwave 1 AM Hmm No AM No AM. Could it be the switch? It's a short wave. And it drops off. This is short wave two. So, could be in need of some repair here. AM in half of half of short wave one. Half of short wave one. Which is right there at 2.0 and down. 1.6, yeah, so that's Megacycle's shortwave. Hmm. Killer Cycle's AM. AM is dead. AM is dead. Well, there you have it. AM is dead. Hmm, it's trying to be there. Let me set this camera down. Hold my hand. Uh, and Central North Korea, which is over 100,000 of their mothers and them came in. Many of them were unvaccinated or frankly... I don't know what I did. Oh. The uh, EG-68 virus, which has caused death and paralysis. What AM or FM? What are we on here? With thick immigrants. That is AM.
roster trying to figure out what you do with them. Okay. I think there's still a lot of Patriots conversation, but... Ham's not working. And that sounds like AM 740 out of Toronto. It's a George Burns show. I don't know why the, the, the it's a, this could have a bad transistor in it because all I did was touch the antenna and, and it woke up. So are we looking at IF transistors again? These numbers would be something else to try to read. This radio is picking up this station, 740. It's a good radio. Well, there you have it. That's the uh, convertible, portable, long line, long line symphonet radio, the LR400. LSR400. Again, this was a Sanyo. Has Sanyo not only written all over it, it just says Sanyo. I have no idea what those transistors would be. We'll keep an eye on this thing. I don't doubt. I don't doubt that it has a bad transistor. We're just going to button it back up for now because you know, other projects going. Okay, again, uh, put back together. Give you one more look at the front and the dial. And I suspect this may have a faulty transistor. And where is our little tiny, teeny, tiny schematic? Let's put it back in the cabinet. I'll show you it assembled. Okay, I noticed on the bottom there were some marks there. And there are a couple more there. I don't know if that was for me. It does not go in this way. If you're looking at the dial, it goes in this way. Watch the way it was taken apart. No, it goes in, snaps in quite easily like that. Handle goes up like so. You close it. I'll give you one shot here of the outside. So there you have it, the convertible. Longline Symphony with phono input. Thanks for watching. Oh, and I would say one more thing, one more time looking at the box here. The corners in the back have gotten hit on both of them, and as you can see, the radio was face up, and these corners are. Those are fatigued, those two especially, and we had it facing this way. Where did we have it? Which way was it in there? That's the way it was in there. That's where the label was. So it was in like this. And it was where these, these things occurred. So I would say that happened in shipping. I'll consult the pictures, but there you go. Always taking a chance when you're buying on these uh, shipped items. So looking at these corners here that are pushed in, both of them, not terrible but still damage that was not, didn't appear to be. If you look at the original picture that corner there is, is, is in pretty good shape and that one over there also. You can Focus. see that corner over here is not damaged and neither is that one right there. So. That's our post office, and I asked for this to be double boxed, and it wasn't. But that's what you got to deal with when you're 
bidding and buying things that need to be shipped. We're lucky that's all that happened to this. Again, there's another shot of it with no, uh, no corner damage. In, of all places, Irving, Texas. Okay, I've taken the radio, I've hooked it to external power. I had an old headphone jack around here, so uh, just for now. Into Dearborn, Michigan. I metered from the battery, which was positive and which was negative. Uh, I believe tip. No, the ring there is positive, and the, the uh, third one here, the sleeve is negative. Any event, that's what I believe. I had to do it between two of the three. Interview. Okay. For a long time. So we're running on six volts over here. And the imam is I've tried my method of. Uh, Putting water on the corners to have them uh, you know, the right come back out, but you can still see a little and, uh, uh, little damage a there because yeah, it's no particle board. The, it's not you know, it's particle Wong board in vinyl, not wood, but it did it maybe come out a little bit. I'm not certain. It's a shame because there's, other than that, there's nothing else. This is now in the cabinet. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and here's I didn't clean he the controls yet. That's AM. You want to avoid anxiety in your life? First thing, he says you come to him and you pray. And notice what he says. All right, now let's try uh, the second shortwave one. I don't think there's much on short wave one. But there is something there. Short wave two. Which are really narrow. Okay, and uh, FM finally, which the antenna is in here. You have to lift the rod if you want to get full reception. Denying marriage licenses from member station WBHM. Pull that towards you. And go up. I'll try to see if we can find the schematic for the LSR 400 on Sam's. I hold my breath, but I won't. Uh, no, I'm not going to put much into that. Okay. Long guy in Symphonet convertible with phono input. And scrunchy belt So the developers want to put in a new 420-acre attraction. They want to do the IMAX theater, retail shops, hotels, and an RV park with a gondola tram that would take you into the canyon floor in 10 minutes. Now, the Navajo are very upset because oh, yeah. this is sacred.